D Shark. Um, you have been invited to a very special session today. And the reason that I'm thrilled that you're here is because we are doing the real deal. This is not a teaser video. This is, we're not selling anything. We are here to help you sell. This is not an introduction to something that you'll buy later or look at later. This is an entire training today from A to Z on how to sell your art online with live streaming. And I love this topic. I've been looking forward to, to doing this. I've been planning this with my special guest for a couple of weeks. And so um, you'll be attending today in person. However, we're gonna be recording this presentation and it's going to be available to you later. So if you can't stay for the entire training uh, or if you want to review later, you want to share this with your friends and have them view it, you will, be, you will be emailed a link to the recorded session either uh, tonight or tomorrow, and you'll be able to get right back in and look at this training again. Uh, so that's, that's really important. I want you to feel completely comfortable with that. Um, one of the things that I'm going to encourage you to make sure you are subscribed to artsyshark.com. The vast majority of everybody on this uh, meeting is subscribed. There are a few people who might inadvertently be unsubscribed or not be on my mailing list. I want you to be able to get that email with the recording link in it. So if you are not subscribed, jump on over to artsyshark.com. Make sure that you are on my mailing list. Um, we are um, going to get started in just a second, um, but I want to give you a little bit of a preview as to why I'm doing this today and what live streaming is. I learned about this technique about a year ago from a woman that I knew who is a jewelry artist, and she kind of figured this out on her own. She was kind of jerry-rigging it, and she was getting onto Facebook for the most part. And she was live streaming um, a, a video of herself selling her work. And she actually had other people join her. She had a whole event going on. And it was kind of like the home shopping channel. It's kind of cool. I even went over to her page and I watched some of these events. And it was amazing how she was doing it. What I love the best about it is that she told me every single time she was going online and doing a sale, she was earning between five and six thousand dollars in jewelry sales. So I know that, that you, know, you can be successful doing this. After I heard this from her, uh, I went online. I started looking at some other artists who are doing this. I watched a painter who was you know, doing a whole tour of his studio. The man sold out of all of his original art that he had for sale during that event. Does that mean that you're always going to be totally successful? No. Does that mean that you need to learn about this, how to put this on? Yes. However, it is super easy. It is, uh, there's no risk. There is no cost. It is just about live streaming. And guess what? I'm live streaming right now. So if I can do this, you can do this as well. All right. Now that's enough preview. I'm going to get uh, introduce my super special uh, guest uh, trainer. He uh, is a marketing manager for Art Storefronts, which is a very well-known um, template website for artists who are putting up websites. Um, he's a good friend of mine. I've known him for five or six years now, and he's a, a really smart guy. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to Patrick Shanahan. Patrick, come on in to the meeting and let's get started. And I'm going to turn this over to you, my friend. I'm going to let you be the main trainer. I'm going to be here for uh, discussion and talk, but um, Take it away, Patrick, and, and uh, let's dive in. Awesome. Thank you for that, Carolyn, that flattering introduction. Uh, as stated, Carolyn and I have known each other for a long time. There was a, there was a point in time when, when she had a gallery, actually, that was, that was on our platform. And, and so we interacted a whole bunch and have been friends for a long time and thought, like, this would be a really fun thing to present and to sort of spice up with a contest. And so we'll get into that as we sort of roll along. Um, just some general programming notes of kind of what we're going to do, what the, what the format's going to be, um, and what it's going to look like. A couple of things going on. So one, I want to talk, um, well, I should briefly say, I run the marketing department at Art Storefronts. We're, we're sort of like a, the whole art platform for artists, photographers, uh, crafters that are attempting to sell their wares. And then 
really were basically an undergraduate university for you know how to run an art and photography business because one thing i know and one thing carolyn knows conclusively that there's people in this zoom from all over the world all sorts of different niches all sorts of different backgrounds and there's one thing that unites you and it's not the fact that you're artists it's the fact that you all suck at marketing right all artists all photographers have a massive marketing problem and i see you nodding the heads you have to tell me i already know i already know okay it's it's just the way that this industry works and so we have a website solution it's it's not about us today but the the, the pertinent points are we have like a little bit over 5500 customers and we study their data okay we study their data very conclusively who's selling the most originals who's selling the highest volume originals who's selling the highest price originals what is their aov average order value what about prints what about commissions um, all across the platform, education courses, like who's selling the most, right? And I would bring that up as an important point because when you have that as a data point, uh, it really underscores, you're able to see who's not talking about selling a tremendous amount of art, who's actually selling a tremendous amount of art and what those types of sales events look like. And a lot of that data underpins sort of these discoveries about, about what we're gonna present today and what we're gonna talk about. So in terms of the presentation, we're gonna, we're gonna start off sort of like a little historical about about some of the things that we've discovered. I'm gonna give you some examples. I'm gonna talk about why live streaming is 100% the future of selling art and photography without question uh, in crafts as well. And then we're gonna get into the guide that we've created for you guys, which is like a quick start guide to how to run one of these. And it is thorough, it is video based. It will show you from start to finish how to do this. And then to incentivize you guys to run a show, uh, Carolyn and I have teamed up on a massive contest, okay, with prizes, because I know going on video is terrifying, right? I know that you guys are all worried about it. Everyone is. So we have a massive prize. So we'll get into that. After that, the plan is to open it up to Q&A, and we'll do like this little digital hand raising thing, and then we'll just bring people on one at a time, answer as many questions as we can until we lose our voices. Uh, as the show's rolling along, though, just in terms of like a programming note, there is um, there's the chat window in Zoom, right? And so if you've got a question, you can just throw it in there. Uh, and Juan, who's working with us, Juan, say hi. Hello, everyone. Hey. Yep. Juan will be in the chat. He'll be answering things. And so he might just be able to deal with your question right then and there if, if you've got one. So we can, we can do that as we roll along as well. But I would, I would say um, just to kick things off, and I think, I think this is just so, so important to understand. There are three ways to sell your art, your crafts, your photography, right? Three ways only. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the number one way, the best way, and it's you know it's not a trick question. Everyone already knows this. It's in person, face to face. Always has been the best way. Always will be the best way. That's not changing. A uh, problem though, uh, we are all of us geographically fixed on this planet. Okay, we have to sleep, and we can't have 15 conversations at once. My wife occasionally tries. Um, so you need to have your art on a website, okay? And you need to have your art on a website such that you can sell it direct. All that does is it solves for all those, those situations when they're not geographically in your town, when, you know, when, when there's 15 people coming at once, when you're asleep. So it's important to do that. That's the second way. The third way, though, is no joke, what I would quantify as one of the biggest advancements in this industry in forever. And it's essentially what we're doing right now, right? And it is leveraging video in either a one-to-one, -one, and I'll, I'll get the zoom out of the way so you can see me, in either a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many fashion, okay? So I wanna just sort of make you aware of what these two things look like. And the one-to-one -one fashion first, let's talk about that, right? And let's say I follow Linda here on Instagram and I like Linda's pieces and my wife and I are just remodeling a, a bathroom. And so what do I do? I say, uh, honey, check this out. This, Linda's got some amazing art here. What do you think about this in the bathroom? She's like, yeah, I really like it. So I send Linda a direct message on Instagram. I'm like, Linda, uh, been following you for a while. Hi, my name's Patrick. Uh, we're really interested in this piece. I wonder if I could talk to you about it. And you know what Linda says to me? No problem, Patrick. Let's schedule a Zoom session or a FaceTime or a whatever, Microsoft Teams, a Google Hangout. And let's discuss the pieces. I can show you a couple of them, talk about my inspiration. Uh, next thing you know, my wife and I, the two decision makers that decide whether or not this piece is going to be purchased, are in a Zoom chat uh, with Linda, getting to know her, uh, you know, learning about her inspiration. She's talking about some of the pieces, holding them up, merchandising them. The dog runs into her room. She's got dogs. I've got dogs. Now we're bonding over dogs. And a connection is made, right? And 
fundamentally, that is such a powerful way to sell art. I can't even begin to tell you how many of you guys are leveraging that in your practice right now. Not very many of you. I know almost no artists are, but let me tell you, it is an absolute game changer. And, you know, sort of an abstraction of it very, very early on. And I'm going to, I'm going to move myself over here and show you guys a little show and tell here. So I just want to show you what it looks like on a one-to-one -one potentially, right? And this is a friend of mine, Jonah. He's, he's an artist actually, you know, what is that 30A, Carolyn? It's sort of around the corner from you. Al's Beach, 30A, whatever. But when you come to his website and you look at the top of it, do you see what he has more prominent than anything else? Book an appointment. And instead of going for a sale online, book an appointment, what is he doing? He's asking people to book a virtual call. And he's got his calendar set already and they can slot in and they can have a time and they can discuss their art with him. And this gentleman sells more of his art this way than any other way. He would prefer to sell his art this way than have anyone ever come to the website. Do you have to have the website? Yes, you do. But do you need, uh, can you, could you run it like this? Yeah, you can. Fundamentally going to change everything. Going to be the future. You're going to see more and more and more and more of it. And I think you should all think about it. I think you can all bolt it into your business right now. And it's not as terrifying as the one to many, okay? Now we're talking about the one to many. And one of my jobs at Art Storefronts is to see things that are working, constantly be running tests with my customers. And so I have one particular customer, his name is Matthew Laca. He is a so painter, um, uh, a French speaking, English speaking painter from Laval, which is in Quebec and Canada. And during the course of the pandemic, he ran a couple of live art shows with our assistants. And now there's some software and some bells and whistles, but just ignore it. You've got a Canadian guy in his garage studio um, evidently wearing a shirt without sleeves. I love making fun of him for the shirts without sleeves. He loves these things. Um, and he's showing old work. This is work that was literally in his basement from, you know, for like the last 15 years. His new stuff doesn't look anything like this. And he's holding it up and he's talking about it. And over a 15 day period, okay, and this is a guy that normally I should mention does, you know, full blown gallery shows, paints for nine months a year, goes and does the shows. Over a 15 day period in the middle of the pandemic, okay, this was in June and May of last year of 2020, he sold, uh, I think, 30 or 62 pieces for a little bit over $30,000 Canadian, okay? And we're like, wow, that's, that's a pretty fascinating result. That's pretty amazing. And the fact that he kept 100% of that revenue and he kept the information on who these buyers were. And so we saw that and in, we leveraged streaming and I can get into more some of the bells and whistles of how we did it. He streamed it live to Instagram and Facebook and YouTube all at the same time. But we're like, okay, th this guy's a pretty talented artist. Uh, let's go and see if we can duplicate it. And so what we've done since then is we've run hundreds uh, of these. Of we've run hundreds of these with every type of customer and every type of niche all over this country and others. And here we have a gal, her name's Meg, she's from Kansas City. She was literally moving out of one studio space into another, okay? And so what did she have? A bunch of unfinished pieces, a bunch of color studies, a bunch of sketches out of her book. Tiny little pieces, okay? She put 82 pieces in the show. She sold 64, 65 of the pieces for a little bit over $12,000 US. Since then, we have run these things in every capacity, every different type of subject matter, material, different personalities, uh, different quirks, um, different different everything, right? And and it's it's been an absolutely fascinating journey, the type of stuff that we've learned. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you, right? Sometimes you get people wearing white gloves. And they're wearing the white gloves to sell. But, you know, every, every, like, you know, everything imaginable, right? Like so many different niches. And what I've seen fundamentally is people that are selling more art as a result of doing one of these shows sometimes than they have in the entire year, okay? And you say, okay, great, Patrick. I understand you've been doing this with customers. That's awesome. Let's, let's take it out of my little world and my silo and let's kick it up. Let's kick it up the trough a little bit. So your guys' industry isn't one that has a ton of reports, okay? Um, you have one that's put out by this group called the Hiscox Group, and then you have this other one that's called the Art Market Report, the Global Art Market Report. It's by Art Basel and UBS Global, or the, just the Art Market Report. And I'm gonna send you a link to this. Juan's gonna put it in the chat right now. I think you should check it out. I think it's awesome because you guys don't have that many reports. As a disclaimer though, you know, these people are really only surveying the top 1% of artists. Read artists selling well over six figures a year all the way up to many millions a year. And so you kind of have to take the data with a grain of salt, right? But one of the things that they've done, is this right? Did they change the website on me? Oh, boo, I think they've changed the website on me since I last presented this. So anyway, in the report, it's, it's okay, I can bob and weave, and they changed it a little bit. It was like a little bit more interactive and friendly than this. But anyway, I'm gonna send you a link to the report. You can download it, it's a PDF, it's fantastic. What they talk about in this thing is that 
over the pandemic year, so last year, the sheer volume of art that was sold to what they call, they love acronyms in this report, HNWs, high net worth, okay? And they said that a tremendous amount of art was sold via OVRs. You know what OVRs are? Online viewing rooms. Do you know what an online viewing room is? A snooty term for a Zoom call, okay? You have on one end, the artist, the dealer, uh, the artist agent. On the other, you have the high net worth individual. They're both in the comfort of their home. They're being shown the art, no different than Linda and I did in our scenario earlier. And they're talking about how much art was purchased as a result of these OVRs. And by the way, you're gonna start seeing the OVRs everywhere is the buzzword in this industry. The online viewing rooms, so snotty, so snotty. Give me a break. But the point is, it doesn't matter if you guys are just getting started and you've never sold a piece, period, or you're very top of the food chain, there's only two kinds of artists. The ones that know about this now and the ones that don't. The ones that are working and hacking at it now and the ones that aren't. And the sheer number of abstractions of this, okay? Let me just, let me just give you another for instance. I'm gonna go back to my buddy, Matthew. So he somehow managed to lock a show in the middle of the pandemic, all right? And it was... June 24th, 2020, okay? And they let him go on with the show, social distancing, masks, but it, how few people could come to it. It was in Canada, right? I can't remember where, it was Ontario or something. And so he had the show and some people came and he sold some art. And then what happened the very next day? The same laptop and the same uh, iPhone that made those live art shows in his basement was streaming in live in the gallery. And guess what? He walked you through the show. And again, he couldn't find a shirt with sleeves. And he's in this gallery now walking around, okay? And he's got his glass of wine and you literally, you, you feel like you're in the show with him, right? He's walking right in like you were there on opening night. And this abstraction of, the, of leveraging video is no different than anything else. And you're seeing the show and people are able to ask comments in real time. And you get to see which pieces have the little red dots. And you're like, oh my gosh, this guy is selling well. This is probably someone I could be collecting. You get to see how talented he is, right? And what ended up happening as a result of him leveraging these techniques and tactics, he effectively sold more of the pieces than he would have if he didn't do it at all, right? And so, you know, was this a crappy deal for him? Yeah, because no one could come to the show. And then he ran his own live art show and sold another 40% of the show, and he still had to do the 50-50 split with the gallery. But, but let me get out of the weeds on that. The important thing is, is understand some of the various different abstractions and opportunities that are available in this whole thing, which I think is amazing. So as, as I look at this, I'm, I'm just telling you, I've been doing this for a long time now, seven years specifically at Art Storefronts, where I've been applying my trades as a digital marketer and as a marketer to just how to move more art or photography. And I'm telling you right now, the opportunity that this represents is the single solitary biggest advancements in this industry that I've ever seen. It's not even close. And the way that I sort of like account for it is, if you were an email marketer in the AOL days when a CD showed up, Okay, when open rates were like 80%, you could have you could have you could have destroyed it at email marketing, right? If you got really, really early to SEO and you were one of the first people on SEO and all of a sudden you became the number one result on Google, it was that big of a thing then. So too with Facebook ads, if you got early to Facebook ads. The opportunity to sell art and photography and crafts via live video, via streaming, is that type of an opportunity, is that profound of an opportunity. Right now, this moment, the fact that you guys are switched on and aware of it, puts you in the top 1% of artists that are marketing out there right now. It is, it is that serious of a thing. And I've just, I've never seen so much product move as a result of this. And we sort of deconstructed some of the reasons why, and I think I kind of want to touch on some of those briefly. One of the things that I did want to show you though, is, you know, just to give it some teeth. So. Matthew shows, two shows, 61 pieces sold, 30,000 Canadian. He's gone on to do many more of these, but I think it's, it's helpful when you give these examples to say like, okay, well, what kind of social following are they working with, right? Like I kind of want to have like a glance at that and understand that. So in Matthew's case, he had 8,000 fans on Facebook, 29,000 followers on Instagram, uh, 9,000 on YouTube. The, the YouTube ones are worthless. He does like that, you know, time-lapse painting thing, but those are all artists that follow that anyway. Um, in Meg's case, you can see that one show, 62 pieces, $12,404. 2,800 Facebook fans, uh, 7,900 Instagram followers, right? So again, a decently healthy following. But look at my buddy Rob. He has the same last name as me. Uh, technically my cousin, not, not really my cousin, but I like him. 4,900 fans on Facebook, 4,500 followers on Instagram. This was his first show, had no idea what he was doing. And you know, these are just sales that are conjured up out of thin air for no reason whatsoever. So the results that we're seeing like this, 
it doesn't even matter. Like I, sometimes there are people that do this. Uh, we, have, we have people on our platform that have 5,000 fans on Instagram that I'll sell people on our platform with a million fans on Instagram, okay? So the point is, is that it doesn't matter where you are in your individual following, you can leverage this technique to great effect, okay? And I, and I was sort of like, you know, again, I've been doing this a long time. I sort of like broke down in this particular post. Why are these things so effective, okay? Why are they so effective? And I think it's important to understand this. One, it's a sale first and foremost, okay? And I don't need to pull the room, okay? I don't need to see how many sales you guys are running. None of you are running enough of them. Not even close, okay? And, and if you are, you're, you're, you're bolting them on to the holidays where we all bolt them on to, which is a great, great tactic, right? You're having a sale for Mother's Day and you're having a sale for Black Friday and Cyber Monday and you have one for Christmas or New Year's, like the normal holidays, right? This gives you an opportunity to have a sale that is not married to any holiday other than a day that ends in Y and you feel like it, okay? I could go as far to say the two most important metrics to judge the health of an art or photography or craft business is twofold. One, what is the size of your collector list? And we can get into that topic on another day. And two, how many sales are you running a year? How many sales are you running a year? And none of you are running enough. It's effective just for that. Number two, it's a brand new, techni it's a brand new technique, right? It is the shiny object of shiny objects. Anytime something like this is brand new, it represents a significant pattern interrupt. It's not your usual posting your images, okay? It's not your usual, I'm having a sale. It's not your usual, I'm uh, showing pictures of you and your cat or whatever it is that you're doing. It's live video. And so instantaneously, just based on the fact that no one's seen anything like that from you, they're like, whoa, you just, you capture attention. And so the first couple of times that you do this, what you find uh, almost, almost across the board, you know, if I've run a hundred of these 98 times, there is low hanging fruit just as a result. There's low hanging fruit sales just as a result of this being so brand new. You've never done anything like this, right? Um, number three, it forces you guys to actually, actually merchandise, sell, and tell the stories behind your work, okay? No offense, most artists and photographers suck at this, right? How many of you have pieces that you hold up how many of you, if I go to your Instagram or Facebook page, is it 2D image after 2D image after 2D image after 2D image, okay? We're bored of that. Everybody sees that all day. I wanna see what actually goes in the wall. You don't sell 2D images. Jessica, I'm not buying 2D images from you or you, Ava. I wanna see the thing that goes on the wall. So this forces you to show it, to talk about it, that it's tactile. I'm not buying an image. I am buying something that hangs on the wall. I'm not coveting an image. I'm coveting something that hangs on the wall. And this is a massive disconnect in this industry, just massive across the board. So it forces you to do that. It forces you to tell stories behind the work, okay? It's marketing that you're, you're just not doing otherwise. You're not doing this. You're not doing it consistently. That's for sure, right? And so there's a win as a result of that. Um, videos are just absolutely the next best way of selling art, right? And you know, if you can sell in person, 100% you wanna be selling in person. But video sort of just acts as a catalyst to any chemical reaction, which in this case is a sale, right? Like, let's say I follow Rebecca, right? And I get on Rebecca's email list. I don't even get on Rebecca's email list. I see an Instagram post one of my friends shared, and it's interesting, and I liked it. And then I follow her on Instagram. And then I'm following her on Instagram for like three months, and then she hits me with a get on my email list for such and such. And I'm like, okay, cool, I get on her email list. Then I follow her for another year and a half. And then finally I decide I'm ready to buy art, right? And so that is the sales cycle of, of Rebecca selling that piece. When you get someone either one-on-one -on -one or one in a group, it just it pours the catalyst into that reaction, into that sales cycle, sales cycle and it just short, shortens it down, it truncates it. And so it's just insanely, insanely powerful. Oh, I skipped number five. So the social sites, okay, understand this. They love attention, okay? We are in the attention economy and all of the social sites, okay, are at a war with one another for your attention and my attention, our eyeballs, okay? That is the currency of the land, okay? How is your attention, my attention measured? Visits, time on site, engagement, what kind of a time are we having, right? And Google is at war with Facebook. Facebook is at war with Instagram. Yes, I know they own both of them, but still they're at war with another competition. Is at war with Pinterest? Is at war with YouTube? right? And they're constantly fighting for attention and no one ever wants to give any of it up, okay? And so what happens when you shift gears from normal text update, uh, normal uh, uh, video or not video, but uh, uh, still image update, normal short little video, and all of a sudden you switch to a live art show, people are liking 
more. They're commenting more. They're sharing more. They are more engaged than any other content that you've put out, period. And so when Facebook sees that, when Instagram sees that, they say, whoa, this person's really helping me out. I'm gonna help them out. And do you know how they help you out? By giving you more reach than you would otherwise have, okay? Remember back in the day when you'd follow me on Facebook and I'd follow you on Facebook and I'd see 100% of your posts and you'd see 100% of my posts, right? And that's what Facebook gave us all for free so they could lure us all in with the handcuffs, okay? Now what is it, right? Like I follow Carolyn and I see one out of 100 of her posts. Her organic reach is at like 1%. Now you can, you can solve for that problem one of two ways. You can pay for ads on Facebook or Instagram or you can run live art shows because what it does is if Carolyn has a thousand followers and she's running these live videos and a normal post for her would only go to a hundred of her followers, let's say, because she's running this live video, i.e. giving the platform what they want, she's now all of a sudden getting 200 or 300 of the thousand followers just because she's running the live art show, just because she's giving the social platform what they want. So they're incentivized to kind of just give us, give us a little bit of a bump on it. So it's a big deal. It is just a huge, huge deal. And, you know, I understand all too well, and I'm kind of just scamming my post, right? Like, scanning rather. We just made um, this amazing guide on how to do this, right? And I've been trying to get my customers to do this for a long time. Okay, I see a couple of them in here. Um, it's really, really hard, right? It's really, really hard, and I get it. You know, the thought of doing video anything to you is absolutely terrifying. Guess what it is to the rest of us? I hate being on video, okay? I have a face for radio. I hate it. But I am contrarian enough to understand how effective it is, right? Live streaming is terrifying, okay? The technology is terrifying. I don't have cameras. I don't have hair. I don't have makeup. I don't have, I don't have any. And nobody cares, okay? Nobody cares. It doesn't matter in the slightest, right? And you might have a website. You might not. Uh, uh, how, do you, how do you do it? How do you wrap your head around this whole thing? So... We've created, okay, the ultimate quick star guide. Now, I apologize in advance because you're gonna have to stare at my ugly face in most of these videos, but this guide is incredible. I'm not kidding, okay? I've run hundreds of these. Uh, I, I do believe myself, my organization, my team, I mean, Juan on this call has run 50 of these things. We, we've run more of these than anyone else on this planet in terms of selling art or photography. It's not gonna stop. We just keep doing more and more and more. I know what it takes to get one in the water and get started. And so I can briefly intro the guide What's rad about this is it walks you through everything step by step. What you need to do, what you need to worry about. I will assuage your fears in these videos. I know exactly where your pain points are. So there's an introduction to the guide. There's the equipment you need. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, you all already have it. You're all on this Zoom call. You already have it or you have a cell phone. Um, I go through how to think about inventory and pricing, okay? Which is, which is a big one. How to approach that idea, how to think about it. Can you run a show with one pieces? One piece? Yeah, you can. Can you run one with 50? Yeah, you can. It's a little bit more complicated and everything in between. I walk through how you need to think about getting paid, okay? And the various different scenarios to approach there. Um, where to stream the show and how to look at that. And I know what you guys are saying. I don't, I don't know how to go live on Facebook. Okay, well, we've got videos showing you step-by-step -step how to go live on Facebook. Every single solitary step you need uh, with the buttons, what to push, where to go, how to do it, okay? So too for Instagram. It is extremely easy to do this on both of these platforms. Here it is. There's, there's no how do I do it, where do I go, the technical hurdle, I'm terrified of the tech, we're all terrified of the tech, okay? Sorted, done. So that's on there. Um, how to announce the show and what to do after, okay? We've run 100 of these. I know some of the various different things you need to do before, during, and after to have a successful show. That's in there. Um, and then I've got some information on some bonus content. I've thrown in some links in to some shows run by our customers. And you know what you're gonna see in these shows? These people look exactly like me. Turns out these people don't live in Hollywood studios either. They have strange houses and little spaces and cluttered and they don't have hair and they don't have makeup and they have tech issues along with everyone else, okay? So it's very disarming. It'll be very disarming to see these. Now, these are some examples. You can see how these people pitched. You can see how these people are utterly, totally, completely normal. You can see how in some cases, probably the only person watching this live show is their mother, okay? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You have to get one of these things in the water, okay? Then... Then, to make it fun, okay, and to give it some teeth, and to poke and prod in you guys and give you some incentives, we're having a contest on top of all of it. So, really easy. How do you enter? All you have to do is run one and email it to Carolyn. That's it. That's absolutely it. Run one, email it to Carolyn, and you're in. So, let's talk about the contest length. 
you have and all the details are on here and we're gonna send you this page. And Juan, at this point, you can just throw the page in the chat. We're also gonna send it to you via email after the fact, so don't worry. Um, three different prizes. And we sort of thought about this, like, you know, obviously I, want, I'm, I would love for you to check out Art Storefronts. Obviously I would love for you to sign up for Art Storefronts. So, you know, there's that. But at the same time, I realize one prize. So let me just say one prize, we're giving away our biggest package. It's a $5,700 value, okay? For a lot of you though, you're gonna be like, nah, I already have my own website, I'm doing my own thing, I don't need that. So we also have an in-house agency that does Instagram and Facebook glow ups, okay? It's basically taking your Instagram page, taking your Facebook page, helping you with all the assets, how to set everything up, how to get everything dialed up. If you click on these two links on here, there's videos, I don't wanna get into videos now, you can see that. The third will be a one hour Zoom call with Carolyn and I, where we will break down everything that you have going on. Your brand, your price points, uh, your range of pieces, what your website looks like, what's wrong with your social media marketing, and it's gonna be a straight AMA. You guys can ask us anything. And we decided we're gonna have the contest run for one month. You guys have one month to run one of these, email it to Carolyn. All the entries are gonna go into a random name picker. The random name picker will do the picking. Uh, the first person that comes up, they can pick any one of the three. The second person that comes up, they can pick any one of the two. The third one that comes up, you're getting the third. So that's how we decided to do the prizes. We have a video down here at the bottom uh, that walks you through how you can get the link from your show to share it with Carolyn. And all you literally have to do is get the link, open up your email and say, here I am, here's my entry, right? And, and Carolyn will file those away. And then I realize that there's gonna inevitably be a lot of questions. We're gonna get into Q&A now, but as the thing goes along, the common questions that come up, we'll, we'll update this page in terms of FAQs, um, you know, and, and, and what questions you might have. So. That's, that's, that's the ball game. That's the story. I'm sticking to it. But uh, what do you think? Carolyn, thoughts, comments, questions? Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. That's yes. like, you know, I just got hit with about a million things going on simultaneously. Yes. Um, now, there is a training, and you've got multiple videos that mm -hmm. are on a page on my site, which we have spent a couple of days setting up. Mm -hmm. And these are going to walk everybody through step by step. I watched all of these and personally what i get more than anything from your training is this is really easy anyone can do it yes you need to push a couple of buttons on your your phone your camera and you know click stream to facebook or stream to instagram mm -hmm. all of the instructions are there if you make a mistake you can ask you can get the answers so there is zero reason why anyone would not be able to do this. Um, I would also say that even if you're like, I know I'm going to be a complete wreck. I look horrible. You know, I just <laughs> got over COVID or whatever your problem is. Um, you're going to think about 20 reasons why you should not do this. However, you could simply do a test stream to social media and nobody might see it, but you can jump back in and take a look at it. And you can also look at what other people are doing. And you can look at the samples that you've shared, and we'll be sharing some of those as well. And you know what? My experience is that everyone is so self-conscious, but the truth is everyone else is worried about themselves. They're not worried about you. They think you look great. And they'll tell you that. Yeah. So getting over that pump is the first part of it. I mean, we are live streaming right now. So if I were selling right now, I mean, I'm already doing it and it's not that hard. It's just telling your story and talking about your art. And you already know more about your own art than anyone else. You are the expert on your own art. So let's just start talking about it. You might want to jot some things down. Hey, title, medium, size. Why did I decide to take this photo? You know, what is, um, what is my email address? Okay, you know what? I'm going to tell you one other thing before I start a uh, conversation with you Um about this, Patrick, yeah. there is a special email address that I'm going to use to receive these videos. And I'm going to type it right into chat right now. And this is an email that I never use except for this purpose. Except for giant it, contests. <laughs> for this giant contest and only several other things. So I'm not going to pick up. Yeah. So don't put me on your subscriber list or anything. Don't, don't say anything else there. Artsy Shark one rt shark number one at gmail.com and that is my address which receives entries from people so make sure that you send it there 
and we're going to receive them. We're going to look at them. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to say, hey, this person is better than that person. You get 100% credit for simply doing it. I don't care how bad it is. If you, if it's really bad and you send it in anyway, you probably should get extra credit, but we're going to put this into a random drawing and the number one, in my mind, that the number one prize, it's worth almost $6,000. Hey, who would not want to receive that, right? And the other one is um, all the social media help from experts. Wow, that's outstanding. And also a live uh, meeting with you and me. We're going to give them a, a critique and we're going to give them a um, consultation. So that's awesome too. So look in chat. It's right in there. I've just posted it, Artsy Shark one at gmail.com for the entries and don't worry about writing it down either because you're going to email them the page anyway and you'll you're going to need the page you guys are all going to look at the page and at the bottom of the page boom it's right there all that all the that's details. right we're going yeah, to yeah. send everyone on in this meeting everyone who signed up for this is going to get the link to this landing page which has multiple videos on it it's going to say how do i get started how do i you know how do i turn this on how do i connect to facebook what do I say? What do I do? And everything is spelled out. Yep. Easy. So I think we just jump right into the Q and A and I would say any questions, let's ideally try to keep them focused on, on the live art show topic, but I'm, I'm down to answer whatever you are too. Yeah. <laughs> so sure. we'll, we'll, we'll start with Jessica. Jessica, you're up first. Oh, and again, how do we, how do we know you're going to have a question? So there's a reactions button at the bottom of your zoom window. And if you've got a question, all you have to do is click the raise hand button and that just kind of forms a queue and we'll just, you know, unmute you one at a time, bring you on and, and you can ask whatever you like. Um, and again, you can throw questions in the chat too. I see Juan's answering a bunch of those. So thank you for that Juan. Um, and you can see Jessica's got her hand up already. So Jessica, we'll start with you. Go ahead. Great. Hi everybody. Thank you. Um, I own another business and I'm mm -hmm. a big time marketer and I'm, I'm all over social media. Mm -hmm. So I know what this, but I have some key questions. Yes. Have you found that there's a sweet spot on timing of these videos because I'm hearing from all of my marketing connections that nobody listens for more than a certain period of time. Have you found a sweet spot? Yeah, so timing? All, all, they're not they're not completely wrong in terms of that, but you will never find a sweet spot in time until you run hundreds of them because the data won't be statistically significant. You could hit a home run. You could hit a home run in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening. Generally speaking, given it's your first one, just do one and do not stress about the time in the slightest. In don't the even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. And then also, you know, there's there's details. There's details in the guide. Uh, in that you'll see is like, when I say I don't care if the only person watching is your mother or your spouse, I'm serious because you're going to email with everyone after the fact, right? It's just Got one. It. The whole thing from start to finish is a giant marketing opportunity. Okay, and everything right. is just as important. Announcing it is important. Sending it to everyone after the fact is just as important. So don't stress oh. about the timing in the slightest. That's a great question. And one, one more question. Yes. Have you found that there's a best platform? Because I'm seeing that so many artists are on Instagram. Uh, is there a best platform to build a collector base? So in terms of collector base, let's, well, let's separate the two questions. You're just talking about which one should you pick? I would pick the one that you have the most followers on, the ones that you're most sure. active on. But Facebook and Instagram are the two preferred ones, and you know you can obviously expand out from there. It gets it gets more and more sophisticated the better you get at it. But you can't let any of that stress you out early on. You got to just get one in the water, right? Got it. Thank you. Yeah, Jessica, pleasure. I'm going to throw this in as well, and this is about the timing. Yeah. Um. I I mentioned earlier that I heard about this a year ago from a woman who was really um, she was literally putting on a sale with other people as well. She was including other artists. I mean, it literally looked like the home shopping channel, which was kind of cool. Yeah. And she was doing it at a regular time every week or every other week. Now, you know, as a marketer yourself, that you know, if you get your email uh, campaigns going out on a regular basis, like I send out my uh, email updates every other Wednesday, people are used to getting it then, they're used to seeing it then. But I completely agree with Patrick, I think, it doesn't really matter when you go live because that's just the first foray out there. You're gonna be creating a piece of collateral, a piece of marketing that's gonna go out to everyone and they're gonna see it over and over again. This video is recorded and so everybody's gonna see it and you're gonna send it out to people maybe, with, maybe in an email campaign and you're gonna say, I recorded this sale, I sold a couple of pieces but there are some 
big pieces still available right now. I'm sending this out now. You know, jump on this uh, recording right now. Let me know if you want to buy them. I'm going to be taking them off the market as they're sold and just kind of create that, you know, urgency for people urgency. to want to look at it, even though they are not there for the initial live thing. Think about it. We have, as I said, we had what, 600 people signed up for this today. I think we've got what, 109 currently on board. Everybody else is going to watch this tomorrow, next week, and they're still going to get the benefit of all of this. And it's going to be recorded. It's going to live forever. They're going to share it with other people. So what I would do if I were you, start showing your stuff, start selling everything you can, you know, in real time, tell them they have extra pieces that are available, and then ask them to share it. If they know someone else who loves your work, you know, can they bring somebody else into your sphere? Get them to sign up for your list. And then you just kind of start playing off of that. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Okay, next I was going to go to Paige, and then we'll go to you, Alex. Uh, go ahead, Paige. And you'll need to unmute Paige. It's the mic icon. Yep, gotcha. Uh, yeah. um, my question is twofold. Mm -hmm. The immediate area where I'd like to use this is uh, I create calendars every year, um, mm -hmm. partially as a fundraiser for a global organization. And they're printed by someone else. So I want to encourage people to go to that e-store mm -hmm. and order and print. Mm -hmm. is, is something like this useful for that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. As long as you have the calendar to show, right? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The second, the second one is um, I have hesitated in doing something like this that's not local, potentially not local, because of the shipping and returning um, issues. Mm -hmm. um, so you say that that's not, you build that, build those costs in, I presume. Yeah, so I talk about the shipping in the videos. There's, there's like three different ways to approach it. And you know, you can bill it in if you like. You can let people know that you'll let them know what shipping costs after the fact based on the address. And most people, thank God mm -hmm. that, that Amazon has not ruined art. There's no expectation that I've found that, you know, I'm getting free shipping on art and photography. Like that's not like standard and thank God for that because we have enough problems with this. So you can do it that way. Um, or if you have it sold on your website and it's linked on your website, you know, you can, you can have that going on, but that's for some people. So that's how we approach it. I haven't seen a lot of returns at all. Um, you know, the majority of people are doing all sales final on it anyway. So it's, it's generally speaking, not a problem we've run into. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Love it. Thanks, Paige. Okay. Next up is Alex. Go ahead, Alex. Hi there. Hi. Um, this is all really interesting. Thank you. And uh, just right off the bat, I want to thank you, Carolyn, because you've, you've helped my business over the years and, and we were profiled on your site and we did the PDF. It's been great. Thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, I hear it. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. I've recommended you to many people. Um, so this is very exciting to me. One concern I have is finding enough uh, audience members. I mean, I have like what I would consider a small number of followers mm -hmm. on Instagram on a relatively small list. I mostly sold live. Um, I'm a photographer and I sell my prints for the last seven years and live has been my best way. So mm -hmm. I'm just concerned that, you know, I'm going to kind of get in front of the same people over and over again. You know, some are repeat buyers, but I mean, it's not like a bar of soap that you got to buy a new one every month, you know? So yeah. how do I, do you guys offer any, um, component that helps us grow our audience oh uh, you mean art storefronts as a business yeah 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 we do i mean it's like a the primary thing that we teach and and that we educate but you know just a just a word on like lists and and sort of that fear one of these traps that we fall into is as humans and marketers is that when we when we put our marketing message out everyone sees it right everyone sees it and nothing could be further than the truth the way that I like to analogize it is we're going fishing, right? And so we take the fishing boat out to the fishing grounds and the line that you throw in the water is your marketing message. We think all the fish are right underneath our boat, right? The same people that have been following you forever and that are on your email list and get all your emails and follow you on Instagram. Nothing could be yeah. further from the truth. Some of them are 3,000 feet down at the bottom. Some are 3,000 miles away. There might be one there at a time. And that's the only person that sees it. And, you know, they're watching cat videos or they're ignoring it completely or they're on vacation. They didn't see it. No one saw it. And so when you realize that as a marketer, what you realize is 
how well you do and how successful you do is how often you're fishing because you never know when the fish are going to be at the surface. You have no idea. The only way that you can solve for it is how often your line is in the water. So you could probably run the same show every day for 60 days. And these people that follow you, the majority of them still might not even see it. Certainly not all of them. So it's, it's less of a concern than you think is, is, is what I would tell you. And, you know, we, we, we all, we all like think that they see the message all the time and that we're top of mind all the time. And you just never know when they're going to have the need or when they're at lunch with someone and it's like, yeah, I'm just remodeling my house and I need some new art. And then because they saw you live, all of a sudden you're in that conversation now and you were never going to be in that conversation if you weren't live at that moment. So it's, it's, it's really, really powerful. And I sort, I sort of think there's one other analogy, and I think this is profound. All of you guys, let's just, let, let's just think of your business, your art, your photography, your crafts business, jewelry, whatever it is. You're just a store in the mall. Okay. You're just a store in the mall. And when you're live, the doors to the store are open. And what happens when you're live and the doors to the store are open is serendipity because, because you're in a mall, certain people are walking to go, go return a pair of shoes or meet someone for lunch. And if the doors to your store are open, they might come in and have a conversation. If they're closed, they're going to whisk on by and you're not even going to get on their attention at all. And so, you know, I find is, is, is sort of an abstraction of that. And, and let me tell you, I eat my own dog food quite significantly, okay? I hate streaming. I hate it. I hate being on video. Why do I do it multiple times a day, five to six days a week? Because it's that effective. And it really is serendipitous. These people that will pop in just because you're live and start asking questions and you're responding and you're just being lighthearted and saying this about that. And, oh, you, yeah, let's catch up. You'll find some profound, profound moments as a result of doing it. Trust me. You know, if I can throw this in as well, Alex, and you mentioned something about, well, people don't need to buy art all the time like a bar of soap. I, maybe not as often as a bar of soap, but in my opinion, if you're going to have collectors, that means they need to own more than one. I mean, that's, that's just the reality of it. Your existing customers are probably your best prospects for future purchases because they already love what you do. They've already proven that they've bought what you love or what you do. They love it. And another thing that you want to want to do is don't be afraid of just getting out there with friends. If you're just starting a list, and I've been doing a lot of teaching and a lot of writing about building lists, and I, I make my living off my list, so you know I, I'm very interested in it. Start out with the people that you know and just talk about it. Most people, if they know that you're an artist, you're very interesting to them. You're a heck of a lot more interesting than their other friend who is selling car insurance, right? Because artists are interesting. People love them. They love what they're doing. They love to know them. For example, I have a friend who literally launched her business last Friday. And I wanted to help her out. And so I just sent some emails to, I don't know, 10 people that are either relatives or friends. She's already made two sales because I just told other people about it. And so you just, the people that you know, start there and they're probably going to be your your best advocates be besides yourself. So draw them into your list. As you meet new people, pull them in as well. And don't be afraid to reach out to the same people over and over. I reach out to the same list and that every one of you is on it every two weeks, like forever, and you're still subscribed. Yeah, and you yeah, know- Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. Also to what I would even follow up more and say that, you know, every time my customers run one and, you know, they'll post and they'll be like, Oh my gosh, it was so terrifying. Um, I was so nervous. I was stumbling all over the place. Uh, something fell. The dog came in. I spilled wine, whatever it might be. But they all say they had fun at the end of it, right? And there's like such a let off after you've gotten the first one down. And my response to them is the same every single solitary time. Great. Now go run a thousand of them because that's what it is. It's literally the future. I don't think there's any higher ROI in terms of a marketing technique or tactic if you're trying to sell art right now that exists, period, full stop. It is way more effective than an email. It is way more effective than a regular Facebook post or an Instagram post. It is the next best thing to being in person in front of a large group. And knowing, knowing what I know, and I should, I should say too that some of you are aware of this already. Some of you, this is the first time that, that this whole thing has been brought, brought in front of you. It's not exclusive to art, you guys. There's not a VC venture capitalist in the entire Valley, Silicon Valley, that doesn't have an investment in a new video, video first commerce enabled. They have a bunch of different buzzwords for it. You can log on to Amazon right now and sign up to run your own QVC on Amazon. 
with any products that they have. You run your own QVC with their software. You can sell it and you can get paid a commission. You'll start seeing New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Fast Company, whatever magazines you, you, you run, mark my words over the next year, more and more and more and more references of this. This way of selling is fundamentally the future. And, and knowing that, you don't have to have everything figured out at first, but if you're gonna be running thousands of them, you're not gonna worry about it. You know, you just, you just get going. You just get going and you start shipping them. We have a mantra, it's just ship it. I only have one piece, fine. Run one with the one piece, do it right now. And then send it to me afterwards, which is why I had the contest, right? I really wanna see all of you guys do it. Um, and it's just, with each one you run, you get better and better and better. And like, don't take my word for it. Go to our Facebook page if you think I'm kidding and see how many streams there are on there from the last year, right? Sometimes like five to six a day. And I'm not doing it for my health. And my team's not doing it for their health or they enjoy it. It's that effective. It is that effective. You guys will find it to be that effective. And it's like anything else. Like, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, right? And so you, you need some practice runs. You, you, you got to get them in. And, it, and everything will fundamentally change from there. Uh, if I can throw something in here, Patrick, yeah. one of the things you mentioned at the beginning of this presentation was literally having a video chat on your website. Yes. You know, request a video chat and get on Zoom with another person. Yes. That is so unbelievably powerful. I mean, yes. I do a lot of consulting with individual artists and I get on Zoom as often as I can. I mean, I'll do a, uh, a phone call if they want, but there is nothing that is more bonding than yes. literally being on video with someone else, seeing their body language, talking with them personally, getting to know them. I, I, it is unbelievable. And I think if you're trying to make a sale and they're interested in something that you have to take the time to meet with them and they appreciate this, show them what you have, hold it up, discuss your terms. Maybe they're doing a commission. Maybe you need to work some things out. But that is more powerful than anything else that they're going to do that day. 100%. And Number I, one thing I, you I should be doing. Number that's one. That's got to be yes. the, the, the top of the pyramid besides being with them in the same room is being on that, on that Zoom call. Yep. Completely agree. It's, it's, there is no higher ROI thing to spend your time on. Unless you mm -hmm. tell me you're one of these, you're one of these few in which I know no one is because I see the data that's selling 70 to 150 pieces a month, right? In which case you're not going to be doing that many video chats until you get there, until you get there, this is it. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. But thank you, Alex. Um, Sunshower, you're up next. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for doing this. It's really, really good information. Oh, thank you. And um, two questions. One's probably really obvious, but I might have missed something at the beginning. Um, are we uh, required to become a member or something of art no. storefront? No, not at all. No? To enter the contest? No, not at all. Huh. Um, okay, but there is probably a, an advantage to becoming part of art storefronts too, right? You can you can certainly explore that on 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 your own time. We'd we'd be we'd be interested in hearing from you. But the, sort of the idea on the contest is like, you know, Carolyn and I are old friends. We talk a bunch of trash, and I just love her. And I was like, this would be a really fun thing to do. I mean, Deb on here, she's a customer. She can tell you we're 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 running one right now, also with our customers and incentivizing them to do one and and offering big prizes. And just thought it'd be a really fun thing to do. And you know, it's it's a hundred percent the future. And you know, by, by on, on our case, like, you know, there's no sales pitch. Just, we want to put the good energy out there. If you're interested in seeing what we do, mm -hmm. awesome. But none of that is required whatsoever to, to enter. And I just want you okay. to run one. I just want you to run one. You know, that Thanks. said, Patrick, yeah. I, I, Art Storefronts is one of a number of uh, art uh, website platforms out there. And there's many, night, many good ones out there. I've been on Art Storefront. I've built uh, a website there. I can vouch for the fact that you've got amazing customer service. I think one of the most beneficial things that you can get from a good platform provider is training. And you are about the best trainer out there. So I'm going to give you a, you know, a lot of praise for that. I've certainly, you've got small wins by Art Store Friends, which is your Facebook group. You've got people just talking all the time, videos in there all the time, endless training coming out. So the more support you get, no matter where you're, website is based, the better. So even if you're not on art storefronts, subscribe to their blog. I got to tell you that I'm absolutely subscribed and it's incredibly valuable. 
appreciate you saying that. We do email too much, though, full disclosure. It's a problem. We're trying to fix it. We're trying to fix it. <laughs> That's your fault. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Trust me, I know. Hi, can I ask yeah, another please, question? Please, That's what it's for. Um, Go ahead. Uh, I heard quite clearly that you said it's best to hold up, you know, paintings or, you yes. know, originals mm -hmm. or like that. And, and I have those yet at my age, by the way, I'm in my seventies now and I have a legacy that I'm leaving to the planet and it's called collaborative art mm -hmm. and it's done through Photoshop and layering and all like that. It's okay. to get people to, you know, uh, not, not hoard their art, but to share with others mm -hmm. and, and make layers. <clears throat> So collaborative art is um, pretty much digital. Yeah. So, so how do you I'd sell like to show some of that, but what, what do you think? Do you, are you, do you plan on selling it? Uh, it would have to be a two way thing, right? It'd be a sale with myself and whoever I collaborated with mm -hmm. or ultimately other people collaborating with each other. Got it. I would, I would just use zoom and do the screen share feature. Screen share. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, kind of like, kind of like what I was doing earlier, right? Like these are all just web pages, right? Like, right. You know, it could just as easily be Photoshop or anything else. You could show the pieces that way, talk about them, you know, do your thing. That's how I would do it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Next up is Sarah. Um, go ahead, Sarah. Hey, I just came on the call and I thought to help people feel more confident, I actually happened to do a Facebook Live on Sunday evening, mm -hmm. and I sold a piece right afterwards to someone who emailed me. Yeah. And it was, I was doing a studio tour and I had sent out my email inviting people to stop by. And then I was thinking how most of my email list are in another part of the country. So I thought, well, maybe I should do a Facebook Live so that they can attend the tour, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just went in my studio and, and held up my phone and, you know, I was self-conscious, like when I'm, when, I, when it's me and I'm thinking, oh God, I thought my hair looked better than that. <laughs> you know? And then, but I get to, when I turn my phone around and start talking about the work, you know, I'm able to get really close to the work and I can, you can see my finger and I'm pointing at different things and just talking about it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was sort of surprised at the positive, like one, and then after I shared the recording, another friend online was like, oh, that was so emotional. I had, I was so touched and I mm -hmm. thought, oh, wow, I, I was just trying to be honest about what I was doing. And um, I thought, wow, it could happen as quickly as that. I'm shipping this artwork out probably tomorrow. Yeah, it's, so, it's your exciting. story we get all the time, all the time. And I think, you know, again, it's like, what are these traps that, that we fall into as a result of these social media platforms? It's like, you're sharing usually just a 2D image and it's 2D image after 2D image after 2D image after 2D image, or maybe you are showing pieces of the work on the wall or someone's holding it, which is great, but it's still just a 2D image after a 2D image after a 2D image. And guess what? It's really small. And how much more compelling is the work when there's the work and then there's a story. There's the story about where it came from. All of a sudden, this little 2D image has something way more powerful working for it, which is the, the, the creativity that went into it, the inspiration, who you are, why you created it, the detail, right? And it's like, I sort of just feel like it's, you're walking down the road and it's just red rose after 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 red rose. And it's been that way for the last 10 years. And then all of a sudden there's this explosion of color and a new flower you've never seen before. Will you stop? You're like, whoa, what is this? I haven't seen this. It's that type of a pattern interrupt and it's just, it's just so powerful. So knowing what you know now, are you going to be running more of them, Sarah? Yes. Yes, you are. And also I just wanted to share that. Oh, I'm when so you glad you turn did. the video around and you're not looking at you anymore, it, you'll, mm -hmm. it'll feel easier when you're looking at your own work that you're really familiar with kind of explaining it. It feels less awkward. Yeah. It's, so I just wanted to share that you might feel if you're feeling like, Oh my God, like that part made me a lot more relaxed when it wasn't pointing at me anymore. Yeah. I, I also think too, that's been awesome for this whole thing is COVID. Right. And so what happened during COVID a lot of the shows, whether they're news shows or sports shows or whatever shows, these people couldn't go into studios anymore, right? So even the celebrity types that were hosting them, they have like the crappy Apple, Apple Air wired thing that we do and they're on live TV and they're home, right? Without the hair and the makeup and crappy light and you hear their dogs and everything else. And it's like, wait a minute, even they're normal people, right? Like we can all, we can all do it. We can all do this. It becomes fun after you do a couple of, like the aha moments for sure hit. So thank you, that's all I just wanted to yeah, I still want I still want you to do another one and enter though. Okay, good. 
love you sharing that. Um, okay, Jessica, it looks like you get your hand up again. Go ahead. What do you guys think of those services on Instagram? I, I've been hit with a ton of them that that you pay twenty bucks and they and they promote on their art site and they get you a ton of followers. Yeah. So the ones that come after you proactively, my yes. my general rule of thumb for those, and this is like a really highly established rule. Yeah. No. Absolutely yeah. not. No. No. I'm getting hit with them all the time. Of course you are. Of course you are. They're nonsense. It's not going to help you grow your business in the slightest. The only good ones are the ones that you approach. Numbers. It's like that's not to say they're not collectors. I mean, it's just people. It's just numbers of people, right? I mean, if I came to your house right now, Jessica, and I picked you up and I drove you to the local ATM and I said, "Show me the button on that ATM machine for Instagram likes." Is there a button on that ATM machine for Instagram likes? <laughs> no, there's not. Nor will there ever be. That's not going to help you in the slightest. So don't do it. Thanks. Yeah, one last thing. <clears throat> okay, Lindsay, you're up next. Looks like we got your mic, Lindsay. Are you there? Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, sure can. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, I'm a, a wood artist, and it takes a lot of time for me to even produce one piece. Mm -hmm. How many pieces should I have if I do a video? One I mean, is enough. I can't come one, on and just sit with one. One is enough. Yes, you can. Would it be best to do it in my studio? It would be best to do it wherever you feel comfortable doing it. You know, there's there's some constraints in the sense that, you know, if your studio is in the woods and there's no internet connection, then yeah, do it at home. <laughs> but if it works, if it works at your studio, then yeah, I would, it's, it's they're very cool to do in the studio for sure. Yeah, where they they can see the tools that I use when I work. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, then I'm not going to wait two weeks to finish the next piece, so I'll have two. I can do it with one. I love it. I love it. I want to see and it. I want to see it too. So you got to. Okay. You, you have to enter. All right. Well, I I planned to enter if I could get a couple done in time, but if I've got just one right now because as i finish them i take them to my gallery rep and she usually sells them within a week or two well those are very good problems to have Lindsay. i think you need to raise your prices <laughs> that's exactly what i was going to say yeah. <laughs> that's You're turning my things that fast rep. you need to increase your price my gallery rep has done that she said i can't get enough from you so i'm going to raise the price Give yourself a raise, like now. Quit my part-time job. That's right. Give so yourself I can a work raise. more. Okay. I will thank you, Carolyn. Thank you very much. Oh, somebody asked the contest deadline. Let's let's. It's a month. It's a that? month. It's October 9th. October the 9th, which means like maybe midnight, the very very end of the day on October 9th. So that means you've got a month to get up and running, to find your phone, to create a video, regardless of how excellent or maybe terrible it is. And again, I personally would kind of give a little bit of, you know, if it's really bad and it, and it, or it's funny, or you know, you're, just, you're just throwing yourself out there, I think you get a little bit of extra credit, although we're not gonna be choosing winners as, you know, on quality. We're gonna be picking at random. So that means everyone on this call should be creating a video, sell us on it. You know, if nobody else, I want to just know that you've done it, that you're getting out there and that you're giving it a try. Once, once you break the ice, you know, then you can do your, your next one, right? Yep. And don't wait two weeks to get started. We have a weekend coming up. Fantastic time to run one. We should like almost give people double entries if they get it in, in the first week. Motivation. See, Deb, Deb understands me. Deb's over there laughing. I see her. <laughs> um, okay, Rosanna, you're up. Go ahead, Rosanna. I got a question for you. Um, yeah. I, I watched your video on YouTube about building the collector's list. Yes. And uh, I was wondering, for this event, you know, how do you um, work on advertising it freely? You know, getting getting people more involved, you know, to come and see you? Mm-hmm. How do you work on that? How do you? Um... Yeah, so I put I put a bunch of that in the guide. Sort of the idea is, is it you know you run the show on a Wednesday, you announce the show on a Sunday, 
Um, you tell everyone that you're going to be going live, you start the sale, then you do the stream, and then you email everybody after the fact. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's it's you it's know, all. You might go. have noticed before this started, if you were on the mailing list and you on my mailing list and you registered, ten minutes before this event started, an email went out that said, "In ten yeah. minutes, we're starting." It's kind of a good reminder for people. Yeah, and we have a really good question here that I love. And and guys, if you have more questions, don't worry, we're we're still going. So you can just hit the reactions thing and and raise your hand. But yes, Rebecca, I'm going to unmute you. It is wonderful, okay, wonderful if you actually have an in-person show to do the live when before, after, and or during. I even like the during, right? Because then somebody, hey, who's that over there getting followed around by the cell phone? That looks amazing. Maybe I need to get over there. Are they famous or something, right? Like, you know, so I, I love that concept. Love it, love it, love it. So that's what I'd say. Yeah, Sarah's asking, what about streaming on YouTube? Yeah, YouTube is great. If you've got a, if you've got a strong following on YouTube, 99% of artists don't. Um, but, you know, YouTube, YouTube is awesome to add to, the, add to the mix too. Whatever it takes, wherever you want to stream it to. I mean, technically, they could even, they, well, you, you, you do have to stream it. It's the important thing that you just at least stream it to enter, right? Because then I'm going to get you know, gonna and gonna if you're streaming, you and by the way, we are streaming on live on Facebook right now mm -hmm. on my business page. And I believe that a pop-up will come up on Facebook to other people who say, hey, your friend at Artsy Shark is now streaming live. So you're gonna capture people who maybe they liked you at some point and didn't even know it was gonna happen. Yeah, and people share it and everything else. So there's just so many ways to win with it. And yeah, it, and people are asking details on the contest. So again, I'll just say, and hold on, I'll pull up the webpage so everyone can see it because I know some people were not on the whole time. So we're gonna email you all this page. It's the guide, all the videos that walk you through everything. And then just down at the bottom of the page is all the details on the contest. So all you have to do is run a live art show, email the link to the show to Carolyn. Here's a step-by-step -step video on how to email the link. So we've got that part sorted for you, right? Um, and then there's the prizes, how long to enter the email. Everything's on there. It's all, we've made this thing as simple as humanly possible to get going. So that's what I would say. Um, okay, Robin, you're up next, go ahead. Yeah, hi. hi. Um, thanks. I, uh, Patrick, I, I've been a part of Art Storefronts and finding it amazingly great. Wonderful. Um, here's the question. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of originals mm -hmm. in my room, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the problem is I, I am doing all my prints mm -hmm. through Art Storefronts mm -hmm. and they get to ship them all, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so my question is, when I do a video, I can show the originals yes. and then lead them to my, my art storefronts website. Is that yeah. probably the best yeah. way to go? Yeah. Well, I mean, you, we have, we have for you, like, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to make it sound like a sales pitch or art storefronts, but we have the, like yeah. the brand new live art show pages that we created that feature, right? Where you can have okay. all the prints on the page. It's all there, ready to go, dialed in, done. It takes two seconds to set these pages up. And then you show, you show the original with like everything else. And then what I would say is like, are they, are, are, do you sell the originals too, or do you hold on to the originals? No, I hold on to them because they're painting on silk. Oh wow! And they're quite large, and they're just so difficult to ship. And oh my just... god! Oh my word! Yeah, but at the yeah, same at, at the same time, a lot to at, make happen. yeah. At the same time, I would say, you know, and and this is one of these things that you fundamentally learn. And I got to get my pen to do it. Is everyone's followers, yours, Robin's, uh, uh, Carolyn's. They all fall into a bell curve, okay? And the bell curve is the socioeconomic bell curve. And the way that it works is you have the lower income folks, you have the, the, the lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, and the high net worth individuals, right? All of our followers fall into that just you know, automatically. And one of the things that I've learned throughout my career is that so many artists fail to have price points for everybody, right? And so if you've got people on that whole scale, you've gotta have price points for everyone. Now you have the majority of this covered because Robin, you can sell merch, you can sell prints, you can sell embellishments and everything else. But don't underestimate the fact that there's somebody watching your stream that might just want to buy that silk. And don't underestimate the fact that shipping is not a difficult thing to do when you're charging $25,000 for the work, right? So don't be shy about saying what those things cost, okay? Don't be shy at all. And not only that, there is a, there's a phenomenon known as price anchoring, right? And the way that it works is the way that I like love to explain it is, you know, in like the car dealerships and the fancy car dealerships and the Mercedes dealership, let's just say there's like the big glass box in the center of the dealership. And in that glass box are like the $150,000, $200,000 crazy cars, right? And then outside right. in the lot are all the other cars. And what happens psychologically is when we're outside 
and we're buying one of those normal cars that is still expensive, we're like, it's okay, it's okay. At least I'm not getting the one in the glass box, right? I'm not paying that high price. And so a lot of times what it does when you have those higher price points on your originals is like, it, 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 it increases the value, it increases the feeling psychologically that I'm getting a good deal on this because look at how expensive the original is. So I want you selling the originals too though. You can, you can, you can ship them, you can sh anything can be shipped. Okay, I'm glad to have that shipped. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Thank you. And we have, by the way, you know, you, well, I mean, you can enter this contest too, but we have a contest that we're running internally right now. Did you see that? I haven't yet, but I- Oh, uh, Juan, Juan, send Robin a message. Send Robin a message. <laughs> yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So, um, Patrick, I'm seeing there's a, a question that just came up in chat about pricing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole into pricing. I mean, it is a big, big topic. Mm -hmm. I wrote an entire course on it. <laughs> yeah. There's many, many different strategies. But I couldn't agree with you more. I think I love to see a price point spread because, yeah, so you, you know, people love your work. It's two thousand dollars. They don't have two thousand dollars, but they can buy a two hundred and fifty dollar piece. Now, does that mean, well, gee, I'm now offering uh, reproductions, and therefore I'm going to be losing my sales of originals? No. Nor does it mean no. that you're going to be making any less. You could be creating small works, for example. Maybe maybe you're doing a per square inch or per linear inch um, formula. You could be making smaller pieces, larger pieces or series of pieces. Um, that's another thing that, that I really encourage people to do are series where you can buy multiples. I'm really into bundling and packages and tiers and you know, up, you know, up selling people. Uh, I also believe that if there's a lot of people out there who think, well, you know, my work is, maybe I can only sell something for a couple of hundred dollars online. I think there is value in maybe even creating something at a much higher price point and seeing, do you have that $10,000 customer out there? If you don't have anything for sale at that price point, then you won't. And that's just not only for live streaming, but just for your business in general. Yeah, and you know, one of, one of the interesting things that I've been doing over the last like year and change is we run these webinars and Zoom calls three times a week where we talk about what we do and, and do the same kind of thing that we're doing now. And week in, week out, there are people on these calls in their 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s, in their 80s, and sometimes even in their 90s asking questions. And why do I bring that up? One, you got to have the perspective of how long you guys are going to be doing this, okay? The, the artists and photographers, and you, you don't go through midlife crises where all of a sudden you just give it up. You know, you, you are made as a creative. You're going to be that way for the rest of your life creating, right? And so when you have the perspective of how long you're going to be at this and selling and then we can even get into the potentially passing the business to an error or whatever. It, 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 it tweaks your thinking the right way, right? And so to Carolyn's point about having those lower price points, I follow you right now and I'm on the lower end of that socioeconomic curve. But you have the perspective of how long you're gonna be doing this. For, for lots of people, it's several decades. For some, it's decades. And I can only afford that small piece of merch or that $100 print or you know, the tote bag or whatever it is that you're offering. And I'd buy it now. And it's on my wall now for the next 10 years. And I'm looking at you every day. And you're top of mind to me every day that I see it. And then guess what happens 10 years down the later? I've become successful. I'm now outfitting my vacation house. If your product is not on my wall, I'm not giving you a call to outfit that vacation house because I've lost you, right? And so when you have the perspective of time of how long you guys are gonna be doing this, you have to have prices. And it doesn't matter how you have it. For me, it, it, the what is irrelevant, right? And, and, and true, I get it. Like, you know, in some cases, like, I forget the gal who, who was wood sculpting, that might be really hard to do, right? But you can figure out a way to do it, like whether it's a calendar or whether it's a garment or whether it's, you know, a print or, you know, any kind of merchandise or whatever it is, like, it's so important to just have something. I mean, these people are following you. They love you. They would buy things, but they, I, I can't afford something at $1,000 right now, right? So give them that opportunity. But you're right, pricing's a, a slippery slope. Oh, Carolyn, there was one question um, you got to speak to. So Mindy said on Facebook, will you send the information here for this presentation? I'm not on the Zoom call or watching on Facebook. I think you said you wanted them to get on your email list. Is that correct? Is that how they get it? Uh, I mean, I know Mindy. Oh, and, so and Mindy. thanks for, um, yeah. So the, in, the information that contains the link to the training will be going out to my entire subscriber list 
who, everybody who attended this uh, call. Mm -hmm. It's going to go out to this whole list tonight or tomorrow. We just got to build that. Um, we are also going to be putting some FAQ information in the end. So if, if you all jump over to my website, let's say you click on that link, you'll see that there's all these videos. It talks about the contest. There's also some FAQs at the bottom. I think we're going to build that out as well. So this is kind of an ongoing, uh, evolving project as we're going. Yep. Hopefully that answers your question, Mindy. Yep. Ready, fire, aim, figuring it out as we go along. Um, Rebecca was asking, how do you handle the comments? You don't stress about them as first. You know, you can answer them after the fact, or you can stop and look at them and answer them. It's one of the one of the fun things you figure out. I mean, there's 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 obviously levels to the whole thing, right? Like, you know, what we're what we're giving you what we're giving you on this is like just get started and do one. Don't stress about all these other details. I, I was saying to Carolyn yesterday, like, you know, I I I've taught this to my customers hundreds of times, and you know, one of the things that I notice is and this is just human nature everyone stresses about all of these things right like what about this what about this what about this what about this and sort of the analogy you give again is like you've never cooked anything before in your life right and all of a sudden you're like okay how do i make duck confit with like you know like a raspberry vinaigrette sauce or like a triple layer cake and i'm like no 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 rebecca all we're having you do this time is boil a hot dog if you can boil a hot dog without destroying it, then we can move up, you know, level it, level it, level. So you don't stress about it early on. Um, you do the best that you can and you just get one in the water. And then again, like you're going to be running thousands of them. Practice, 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 practice. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. You know, I think my biggest concerns have been the tech of streaming because everybody, everybody freaks TV. out about it. Yeah, I do a lot. Yeah, I do a lot of online stuff. And I've literally, I mean, I live in Florida. We have things like hurricanes and, you know, afternoon um, severe thunderstorms here. I have been thrown offline in the middle of an interview at one point. And, you know, I just jumped back in at one point, the whole thing went forward. Um, everybody out there understands tech problems, because that's probably, you know, happens to everybody haven't had them. Yeah. If you haven't had tech problems, it's because you've never been online. Yes. So if you get booted, or you have to start over again, just move past it and just keep going. 100%. 100%. And it happens to everyone, even, even the professionals, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, join, in, join News Live 5, reporting from Ted. Are you there, Ted? Right? Like, it happens all the time. Right? <laughs> it's like a weatherman who gets thrown out of the uh, storm yeah. or whatever. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's what I would say. Um, but what else, guys? Any other questions? And again, you can raise a hand by just doing the reactions button at the bottom. I normally say that, like, oh, you can just raise your hand and we'll see it. But, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of faces on here, so I don't know. I saw that yawn, Emily. I don't want. I don't want to find out. I'm bored. I'm boring here. <laughs> oh, oh, that's too funny. Um, too funny. But okay, Carolina. Oh no, here, Rosanna's got one more. All right, go ahead, Rosanna. Okay, I got a question yeah. uh, about the print on demand. Uh, I I looked at your service and storefronts, mm -hmm. art storefronts, and then also other uh, places, but. Uh, some of the places were only selling originals. I couldn't get a, a lot of places that sell the print on demand uh, option, you know? Yeah. And uh, what are some of the suggestions you have for that? Yeah. I mean, are you talking about do it well? Do this. Just come to one of our webinars. I don't, I don't want to make this one about like what we do or our services, but if you want to come to one of ours, we run them three days a week and they're like really easy to join and you can just pop on and then, and then we can get into the weeds on everything else. Just, just out of respect for staying on topic. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Rosanna. Thanks. Huh. Well, pretty good. How long have we been going? An hour, hour 18? No, hour 18. Yeah, hour I, I think this is great. And, it, you know, um, unless we have any other questions, it might be a good idea to wrap it at this point. You know, yep. you get to about an hour and people start to fade out. Um, a lot of chat going on here. A lot of good questions. A lot of great conversation. I would say this is for anyone who wants to give it a try and that should be 100 percent of the people on this call yes click on the link you've either seen it in chat you're on that page you know on another window or you're going to email or you're going to be getting yeah. that link from me in an email go to my site go through all of those videos even if you don't understand it 100 just get started everything is explained it can't be easier send in your uh entry you know, get in touch with us and let us know what's going on. We want to see what's, you know, how many people are doing this. 
We're going to be sending out record the recording. You're going to have a month to get this in place. And then we're going to do the amazing prizes. And I'd love to hear what your results are. I saw a couple of people in this chat today saying, guess what? I already did this. I made $2,500 or yes, I did this. And there was a sale the following day. That's enough to keep you going right there. I'd love to hear some, some really great success stories or even just questions like, or maybe I couldn't get a line or these are my problems. Let's keep this conversation going because I think this is so important. People need to be doing this. And as you said, Patrick, this is the future yeah. of selling online. Everyone is online. COVID drove us online. Technology put everybody online. It is not hard to get there. There's no barrier to you, you know, opening a website getting anywhere online, even if you're only on Facebook, you can do this. Just And there's information on that uh, uh, training page about how to get a shopping cart in place, even if you don't even have a website. So there's really no excuse for not getting started. I'm excited to see the results from this group. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank everybody else for attending. This has just been, a, I think, a tremendous session. If there's anything else that you want to add before we run? Um, there was just some people asking that came on later, whatever, you're going to be emailing them a replay of this. And so if for whatever reason you want to rewatch it or whatever, Carolyn is going to send it to you. Rewatch it, share it with your friends, send in your entries of your videos. Let us know what happens. Wonderful. And I will be in touch with, with my, uh, in a month, I'm going to be sending out the winners as well. Super fun. Yeah, we might even do a live to pick the winners. You never know. Maybe we should do that. Could be kind Let's of fun. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. We'll do All it. right. We'll do, that for sure. we'll do that for sure. All right. Um, thank you very much. Been awesome. Appreciate it, you guys. And get the, get the entries in. Get the entries in. Don't wait. Don't wait until week three. Get going. Get going mentally. You can all do this. You can all do this, and we cannot wait to see them. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.